the lottery. It's the second best use of magic marker on ping pong balls after Kermit the Frog's eyes. <laughs> now, this past week saw a huge Mega Millions draw. A big winning lottery ticket was sold in New York. Lots of people around here have been peeking at their lottery tickets this morning. In the Mega Millions mystery this evening, that $321 million jackpot, the search for the winner is on tonight. Well, the winner shouldn't be too hard to find if someone at your work this week marched in and told everyone to go f*** themselves <laughs> before flipping their desk over and storming out. That's probably your winner right there. <laughs> but, but don't worry if you didn't hit the jackpot. You will, frankly, have an unbelievable number of other opportunities to play. 44 states currently have lotteries, and you can't have missed the commercials, featuring everything from uh, a ping-pong ball thunderstorm to a furry dressed as a cat playing with a ball of money <laughs> to a weird lucky man who, for some reason, uh, decided to spend his lottery winnings terrifying a penguin by taking <laughs> it hang gliding. <laughs> that is a bizarrely specific use of a big lottery win. Look, if my numbers come up, I'm strapping a penguin to my chest and I'm taking to the skies. F*** you, evolution! I decide who flies! <laughs> That's my choice! My choice! <laughs> lottery commercials. <laughs> lottery commercials are incredibly seductive and they're also everywhere. States spend half a billion dollars on them every year and the reason they do that is that the lottery is a massive moneymaker for them. Last year alone, lottery sales totaled about $68 billion. $68 billion. That's more than Americans spent last year on movie tickets, music, porn, the NFL, <laughs> Major League Baseball and video games combined. Which means Americans basically spent more on the lottery than they spent on America. And, <laughs> and if you think about it, it's a little strange for the government to be running what is basically a gigantic gambling business. But, but we don't think about lotteries like that, perhaps because they're sold to us more as charitable foundations. $3 billion for education opens a lot of doors. The Tennessee Lottery, game-changing, life-changing fun. Education matters to Oregonians. That's why over $5 billion in lottery dollars have gone to support public education. The Oregon Lottery, it does good things. Every time you play a New York lottery game, a portion of your sale goes to aid New York State school children, just like them. New York Lottery, everybody wins. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> Those ads are basically implying that anyone who does not play the lottery is selfish. Hey, why do you want to educate these harmonising children, you fucking monster? <laughs> so, so let's take a look at those slogans. Everybody wins, the lottery does good things, and it's game-changing, life-changing fun. Is it, does it, and do they? Let, let's start with the basics. The lottery generates $68 billion in sales a year. So where does that money come from? Over the course of the last two decades, multiple studies have found lower-income households spend a higher percentage of their money on lottery tickets. OK, that kind of makes sense. Lots of people like to gamble, and for lower-income households, the lottery is an affordable way to do it. You know, generally, when wealthy people want to take risks with their money, they either choose to invest in the stock market or they leave their wife for Amber without signing a prenup. Because <laughs> Amber's forever. Besides, she just gets you. She's a little tiring, but she'll be there. The, the lottery is in the business of selling people hope, and they do a great job of that. Start a college fund for our kids. Start a college fund for their kids. A game with jackpots worthy of your dreams. Mega Millions. Dream Mega. That feels like an ad for a mutual fund. But crucially, the lottery is not an investment, because it's worth mentioning that those mega dreams are mega unlikely to happen. What are the real chances of winning? A lousy one in 176 million. Winning the mega millions is akin to getting struck by lightning at the same time you're being eaten by a shark. OK. <laughs> that, that is both an evocative image and an amazing pitch for a movie. OK. So there's this guy, he's getting eaten by a shark, see? Lightning hits him, he switches minds with the shark, the shark wins the lottery. It's Freaky Friday meets Jaws. I'm calling it Slum Shark Gillionaire. <laughs> Slum Shark Gillionaire. <laughs> Channing Tatum has passed. Now, 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 the lottery does have some smaller games and prizes where the odds are a little better, but even then, it pays out a much lower percentage of its revenues than even horse racing. And the worst part is, when you lose the lottery and you're angry with your ticket, you don't even have the satisfaction of knowing that it'll be turned into dog food. And yet, and yet, 
We are still drawn to the lottery, partly because we're told to ignore the odds. It's your dream. Anything can happen. Dream, play, win. Hey, you never know. Power your dreams for just two bucks. Those ads are so effective. In the time it took you to watch that montage, I went out and bought all of these lottery tickets. <laughs> Someone's got to win. It might as well be me. But even when people do win big, things have a tendency to go south fast. We've all seen tragic headlines about lottery winners like a lottery winner blows through 27 million, lottery winner found dead in bed, or brother hired hitman over 16 million jackpot win. It seems winning the lottery can be like marrying Tom Cruise. Sure, it seems amazing in your mind. You might even dream about it happening one day. But if it actually does, five years later, the magic will be over, you'll be estranged from your family, and you will have seen things you can never unsee. <laughs> never. <laughs> in, now, in Israel... In Israel, lottery winners are actually photographed wearing masks to protect their identities. And in the 90s, this is how one man from Gaza collected his prize. Most lottery winners don't turn up with a bag over their head, but this 24-year-old Palestinian wanted to remain anonymous. That's right. Winning the lottery is such a curse that you can find yourself in the Middle East with a bag over your head because something good happened to you. <laughs> so, so why do people play? Well, for some, they can't stop. The lottery can be extremely addictive, and states know this. Many lotteries offer resources to help problem gamblers. The Illinois Lottery even has a section on their website for responsible gaming. Although, when we clicked on the link, we got, and this is true, a pop-up ad for the lotto. <laughs> Seriously, Illinois? There is a reason that the first step in a 12-step program isn't congratulations on starting the program. Why not reward yourself with a refreshing gin and tonic? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> but look, I'm sure... I'm sure that that is just an innocent mistake. Just like I'm sure that it's a coincidence that if you Google lottery intervention, this is what comes up. <laughs> Need a lottery intervention? Play the new DC Fast Play games from the DC Lottery. Feel the thrill of winning instantly. Are you kidding me? Someone at the DC Lottery deserves a promotion before they go directly to hell. <laughs> and, and at the very same time they're supposedly addressing problem gambling, states are actively expanding into even more addictive products. Just look at Oregon. The lottery takes in about a, uh, makes about a billion dollars every two years for the state. About 80% of it, maybe even more, 86, 90%. Yeah, that's what we're running right there yeah, on the screen. Boy! Comes from one source, and that's these video machines, mostly video slot machines or video poker. The vast majority of Oregon's lottery income comes from video slots and video poker, meaning that Oregon claims this is a lottery machine. Because of course it is. Just like this is a lottery wheel. And <laughs> this is a lottery table. And of course, we all remember Martin Scorsese's movie, Lottery. <laughs> Machines, machines like these, are not only addictive, they're incredibly lucrative. Internal Oregon lottery data indicates that regular lottery players lost an average of $106 per year, whereas video poker and slots players lost an average of $2,564. That's an insane amount of money. You could buy a 98 Mazda with that money, and you should, you should. It's got a moonroof and six-way speakers. You should get in it right now and drive in the opposite direction of any video poker machine. Although, good luck with that if you live in Oregon, because these machines are everywhere. There are more than 12,000 of them in the state. And that kind of ubiquity puts some people in serious danger. My boyfriend and I have got, gotten into, into fights uh, over, you know, I'll go out, so, you know, I'm just going somewhere with a, with a friend of mine and, and I end up playing video poker and or I'm supposed to go to the store to buy food and, and I come home with no food and no money, you know, as soon as I walk in the door, he knows. And then we don't have any food. Remember, the machines that are causing her such trouble are run by the state. A state which proclaims its lottery does good things. And at this point, I'm thinking it may not be a coincidence that the logo for the Oregon State Lottery is someone crossing their fingers, the universal sign for lying. <laughs> OK, so... So maybe... Maybe the next question... Maybe the next question should be this. 
Why do state lawmakers keep approving all this? Well, as those singing children told us, lotteries are really all about good causes like education, and that's always been the excuse. State lotteries were illegal in this country until 1964, when New Hampshire launched the first one under the guise of a very familiar message. How come you're buying one of these tickets? This is the first one in our country and I would like to participate in it. And I also feel that it's for a very good cause of education. I don't think there's a better reason for buying one of these. Well, there probably isn't a better reason, but there are plenty of better ways to fund education. Sales tax, bake sale, or simply putting cash into an envelope, writing school on the front of it, <laughs> and mailing it. Because for all the claims, for all the claims that lotteries are a huge boost to education, the reality is a little different. Our investigation of government spending in the 24 states that dedicate lottery funds for education yields a stunningly bad report card. The percentage of state spending on education is down or flat in 21 of those states, from coast to coast. Lotteries provided no additional funding for education in 21 out of 24 states. As math students in one of those places would put it, that is nearly 50 per cent. <laughs> how is this... how is this possible? Well, look, let's... let's, let's just look at North Carolina. Their governor inaugurated the North Carolina Education Lottery nearly a decade ago with big promises. When the lottery is fully implemented, we'll be adding another half billion dollars annually for education. Half a billion extra? That sounds great. You'd think by now all North Carolina preschoolers would be strutting around in fine bespoke suits, <laughs> quoting Nietzsche and Kierkegaard. But in fact, North Carolina currently spends less per student on education than it did when the lottery even began. And if you're thinking, how the f is that possible? It's because money in state budgets tends to move around a lot. Trying to add money just for one purpose is a bit like trying to piss in one corner of a swimming pool. <laughs> it's going all over the place, no matter what you claim. <laughs> Let me give you just a narrow example. In 2012, North Carolina used $100 million of lottery money for school construction, but that didn't mean the school construction budget was $100 million bigger than it would have been, because while that money was flowing in, other money was flowing out. A portion of corporate income taxes used to go toward construction, but when the lottery passed, that tax money went away, substituted with lottery revenue. And where did that corporate tax money go? Who knows? There's not even a warm spot where it once was. <laughs> but, but in a completely unconnected development, North Carolina plans to cut corporate taxes substantially over the next few years. So thanks for playing the education lottery, North Carolina. Better luck next time. But despite all this, states are not only keeping faith in lotteries, they're doubling down and trying to reach new players by putting it on your cell phone. Illinois launched an app this year to let you buy tickets on your phone, which is terrifying. Because we all know that if, starting right now, your mother could play the lottery as easily as she plays Candy Crush, in three weeks, she'd be preparing Thanksgiving dinner over a trash can fire. <laughs> but... But I'm sure... I'm sure that Illinois will make the same argument that everyone does to justify state-sponsored gambling. Hey, it brings in money for good causes. Except, as I think we've seen by now, Lotteries are bad for losers, often bad for winners, and a pretty compromising way to assist state budgets. Think about it this way. Gambling is a little like alcohol. Most people like it, some are addicted to it, and it's not like the state can or should outlaw it altogether, but it would be a little strange if the state was in the liquor business, advertising it by claiming that every shot of vodka you drink helps school children learn. <laughs> yeah. Thank me for being a friend. Kids and iPads. I'm a winner. Everybody's a winner. <laughs> <laughs>